Welcome to our lesson on retrieving real-time portfolio and account information. Before we begin, it is important to note that historical portfolio information is not available by design since TWS is a trading application. Therefore, it is not available to the API. There are several different functions in the API which would be used to subscribe to the position updates. Each follow the same subscribe and publish model where the initial subscription request is made. Then, TWS will send back a complete list of all positions matching the query. Afterwards, eWrapper will continue to send back updates to the list as they occur in real time until the subscription is canceled. The first function is Rec Account Updates. This function causes both position and account information to be returned for the specified account. It can only be used with a single account at a time. This means it's most commonly used in single account structures. If you have a multiple account structure, such as an advisor account or a linked account, more commonly a different function will be used. A second function, which can be used to query position information, is just called Rec Positions. This is used to subscribe to position updates for up to 50 subaccounts simultaneously. If you have an advisor account with multiple subaccounts or an introducing broker account with multiple subaccounts, this would be the function commonly used. It is important to keep in mind if there is a very large number of subaccounts, you likely need to use a different function such as rec positions multi, which subscribes to position updates in a single subaccount and or model portfolio. It is commonly used in the case where there are many subaccounts and the function rec positions can't be used to receive position updates for all of these accounts at one time. Or, in case you're interested in the positions in a particular model portfolio, which are sometimes enabled on request in financial advisor or introducing broker accounts. It's important to keep in mind that these functions will only return information about current positions in the account. They cannot return information about historical positions. If you're interested in receiving information about positions in your account from yesterday or last week, this can be obtained through flex queries or statements in account management. It's even possible to obtain programmatic access to flex queries using the flex web service. Another common point of confusion is with cash balances. So virtual cash positions, which don't represent real cash balances, but are only bookmarks used by Forex traders to track trades, are returned with position information and are represented by a Forex pair. For instance, EUR.USD. However, real cash balances are returned with the account information discussed next and always listed as a single currency and not as a pair. For instance, you might see a cash balance of 20,000 USD. But if you see a pair such as EUR.USD that doesn't represent the real cash balance but a virtual position, account information such as net liquidity in the account, cash balances, and different currencies, along with the required margin amounts, are returned after calling several different functions. The first function, which is commonly used, which we discussed earlier, is Rec Account Updates. This returns information about both positions and account data in a single account. In the case of financial advisor accounts, you can request aggregated data from all subaccounts. However, it can't be used to subscribe to updates from multiple subaccounts simultaneously. The second function is Rec Account Summary, which is more commonly used to subscribe to account updates from multiple accounts at once. Finally, there is also the function Rec Account Summary Multi, which is used to subscribe to account updates from a single subaccount at a time in the case where there are more than 50 subaccounts and can also be used with portfolio models. When requesting account data from the API, a complete list of all types of data or account keys is initially returned and then updates are sent either if there is a trade or if the account value has changed 
within the three minute period. This corresponds to the same update pattern, which you can expect in the TWS account window. Here is a short sample program using REC account updates. Notice it looks very similar to the previous programs. The only difference is the function we call here in the start function is REC account updates and then the callback functions we've overridden. The overridden functions handle return data or update portfolio, update account value, update account in real time, and account download end. After we invoke REC account updates for a particular account, in this case the account number can be omitted because it's connected to an active TWS session. If you want to start a subscription, you invoke REC account updates with true. If you want to cancel it or stop it, you can call REC account updates with false, which is what I'll do in the stop function. After I call REC account updates, I set the subscription to true for this account. Then updates are sent first back to update account value that has different information. This can return the cash balance, the required margin for the account, or the net liquidity, and so on. Then, after the data is returned, there will be a separate callback for every key to update account value. Then, we will also receive portfolio information back to the callback function, update portfolio. The callback update portfolio will be one for each position in the account. You could see the different types of information returned along with the position. See unrealized PL, which will be the total unrealized PL since the position was open. The realized PL, which would be the realized profit and loss for the current day. If you've closed out any positions as well as the account name, the current market value the average cost used to open the position, and of course, the position size. And then, with each callback, there is some time to let the data run completely. There will be an account download end to let you know that all the information has been returned. This functionality is only called after the first full batch of information is returned, and then after that you will receive updates in real time, but updated download end won't be called because there won't be a complete batch of information. It will only be those positions or those account values which have changed since the last return of data. Since I'm already logged in to TWS and listening on socket port 7497, I can just run this program and it should connect and then call rec account updates. Wait five seconds and then prints out all of the results and then I'll call the stop function. Let's take a look at the result. So you could see the initial notifications returned in the error callback are just to let us know the market data farm is okay. Then we will receive all the different account values in alphabetical order starting with the account code, which is just the account number. It'll give us information like say accrued cash, dividend information, which is just dividends accrued in the account, the cash balances on the different currencies, so you could see these are the real cash balances showing the different currencies. For instance, my cash balance indicates that I have zero euros. I can also see that I have $271,668.68 in USD in cash. Then we can receive other information, including margin information, leverage in the account, realized P&L for the account, and then after all the account keys return, we will receive the portfolio information. These are the current positions in the account. You can see there's a position in Apple Incorporated, or Apple, which I own 1,000 positions of. This has a current market value of approximately $148,000, and an average cost of approximately $140. The total unrealized P&L is nearly $7,200, and the realized P&L is zero, meaning I have not traded this position today. Then, we receive a separate callback for every position in the account with that information, as well as the time of when that information is current. 
If we were to just leave this program running instead of calling the stop method, then make a trade in TWS. If a position was changed, then we would immediately receive that callback to let us know there's a change in position. Though we would only see changes for that particular instrument, and we would not see changes for any other instrument. Finally, here at the end of the first complete batch of information, we received a count download end, just to let us know that all of the information has been returned. That is our lesson for today on receiving portfolio and account information data. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to having you in our next lesson. Thank you.